Welcome to LA Now, your Los Angeles County news source. The most wonderful time of the year kicks off at the Music Center. And a long-term partnership is finally made official, all for the benefit of local animals. Plus, we'll go behind the scenes as the caregivers of the NICU work around the clock to save the lives of premature babies. LA Now starts right now. And thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Deneau. The holiday season is officially here. The huge 45-foot holiday tree has arrived at Music Center Plaza, and LA Now was right there when the lights went on. Three, two, one, go! Woo! A symbol of hope, peace, and freedom, the county Christmas tree is here. The choir at Burbank's Providence High School serenaded the crowds with the little holiday help from the group Brass Pacifica. It's all about the lighting of the tree for all the children of L.A. County. It was like the best Christmas tree I've ever seen. It was a tradition started by Supervisor Kenneth Hahn many years ago, following the tradition that President Calvin Coolidge had established in the White House. While some played in the adjacent fountains, other little ones were fixated on the holiday festivities. We brought her out because she loves music, so we knew that they were going to have Providence High School here singing and then the jazz band, so we wanted to continue to expose her to the arts. And no better place than nestled between downtown's Dorothy Chandler Pavilion and the Music Center. Be with the family, make the children happy. The 45-foot tree will be on display throughout the holiday season and then taken down during the first week in January. With the economy still affecting many local families, the toy loan program is on hand to make sure that county kids have toys to play with. Now, the program works the same way as a library. You check out a toy at one of 50 countywide locations and then you return it within a week. More than 35,000 children use the program each year. The toy loan program started in 1934. It depends on individuals, groups, and manufacturers to donate toys and books to the program. For more information on how to help or to find a location near you, visit the website on your screen. Few things are more fragile than the life of a critically ill newborn. The nurses and staff at Harbor UCLA's NICU unit are taking steps to make sure each of their babies gets the best care possible. Perrine Bakshe has more. Just look at your bag and we'll disconnect. Small changes make a big difference. Just ask Jeannie Clark, the nurse manager at Harbor UCLA's neonatal intensive care unit. The nurses do their best to not approach the line or enter a line without providing a sterile environment. And that's what's made the difference in our practice. Sterile techniques such as this would have contributed to 460 days without one single central line infection. The NICU joined a statewide collaborative to reduce hospital-acquired central line infections. Their new standards have had a significant impact on infection rates. Now when we put on the mask and we also use gloves and put on a gown, we have found that that has really cut down on our infection rates. It's made, that's what made us turn the corner. Until the staff made those changes, they were still getting about four infections a year. For the NICU staff, just one infection is one too many. Our babies uh, deserve the best. Whether they have uh, any financial resources or not, they deserve the same thing, uh, same level of care that other babies in the community would receive. So that's something we're proud of being able to provide that for them. After today, it will be 461 days and counting. For LA Now, I'm Perrin Bakshe. As a major teaching center, Harbor UCLA's Level 3 neonatal ICU offers immediate access to pediatric and critical care specialists. A county library in South Whittier adds a feather to its cap. The Sorensen Library was recently upgraded from LEED certified silver to gold. Now that means the building is even more environmentally friendly than originally designed. Minor modifications in the lighting as well as heating and cooling systems resulted in the upgrade and overall experience 
for the library's patrons. We have the very high ceilings with large windows and so it allows perfect sun to come in on a daily basis. So they, that's one of the main things they notice. Now the Sorensen Library is located at 6934 Broadway Avenue in South Whittier. For more information, go to the website on your screen. When officers from the Department of Animal Care and Control respond to an emergency, the group Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals is there to assist. Deanna Morgan explains. According to a national survey conducted this year about pets, about 72 million American households have pets. That number seems to be increasing every year. Most of us don't think about what would happen to our pet in an emergency. Rescue agencies do. Here in L.A. County, two of those rescue agencies have formed a much closer relationship in hopes of saving more animals' lives when a disaster strikes. We've learned lessons so many times how people will either refuse to evacuate or will run back into a dangerous situation to save the life of their pet. Madeline Bernstein is with the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals of Los Angeles, or SPCALA. The agency saves thousands of animals from disasters and emergency situations every year. What they do is critical, especially here in Southern California. I'm from New York, and California, I've seen more disasters than I've ever seen in my entire life. It feels like here there's a disaster a week. Earthquakes, fires, flooding. Bernstein says the agency gets so many requests for assistance locally and nationally, they don't always have the resources to help. They don't have training in dealing with a horse that's terrified or even a very large dog that might be stuck in the house and the house is on fire. For over 20 years, SPCALA and the LA County Department of Animal Care and Control have assisted each other when in need under no formal agreement. That is, until now, various emergency situations prompted the county in September to take their relationship with SPCA LA one step further and create a mutual assistance agreement. Having a formal agreement provides nonprofit organizations like SPCA LA that are funded by private donations more funding. Typically, it costs way more you know, than the amount of donations that would come in, but we do it because we need to help those animals. For LA Now, I'm Deanna Morgan. The Department of Animal Care and Control hopes the enactment of this agreement will prompt more animal rescue groups to jump on board. And that's all the time we have. Thank you for joining us. Watch us online anytime on LACountyChannel.com. Please stay tuned for a list of websites featured on our show. And we'll see you next time on LA Now.